Welcome to my YouTube channel, Techie Code Buddy. I hope you all are doing extremely well, and your placement preparation is also going well. Well, guys, first of all, if you are new to this channel or haven't subscribed this channel till now, then do consider subscribing this channel, as this really motivates me to make more such content for you and for your placement preparation. Well, in this video, we are going to solve some questions from reasoning and verbal ability, and then we will be solving some pseudo codes, right? So uh, the video is going to be very good for you. So do share this video with the all prepsters you know, and let's get started with the video. Okay, so we will start from reasoning questions. So just a minute. Okay, so this is the very first question. And the question is, how many digits are there which are immediately followed by a di digit divisible by 5 and immediately preceded by a digit div divisible by 3 from this series, right? So there is a series and we have to tell how many digits are immediately followed by the digit which is divisible by 5 and preceded by the digit which is divisible by 3. So we will not start with 2 because we need to see for the preceded digit as well. So we will start uh, to check from 3, right? So first of all, we will check 3, whether the followed digit is divisible by 5 or the end, sorry, not or, and the preceded digit is divisible by 3. So, of course not. So, this will be fail. So, we will come here. Now, we will check for 7. So, whether follow digit. That means 5 is divisible by 5. Yes. Now, let us check for preceded digit. 3 is divisible by 3. Yes. Again. So, yes. Uh, we have got that yes. One digit is there. Now, I am writing here. Right. Now, we will check for 5. So, follow digit. That is 6. 6 is divisible by 5. No. So, we will move further. We will check for 6. So, follow digit. 5 is divisible by 5. Yes. We will check preceded digit. 5 is divisible by 5. No. So, again, we will come here at 5. So, follow digit. 4 is divisible by 5. No. So, we will move for, uh, here. Now, we are at 4. So, 6. 6 is digit uh, divisible by 5. No. We will come here at 8. So, 3. Because we need to check follow digit. Now, so, 3 will uh, check that whether it is divisible by 5, no, we will come here on 2. So, after 2, what is there? 5. So, 5 is divisible by 5, yes. Now, we will check for preceded digit as well. So, 3 is divisible by 3, yes. So, we have got one digit as well. So, now it is 2. Okay. Now, we will come on 5. So, after 5, what it is? 4. So, 4 is divisible by 5, no, we will come here. We will check for 4. So, after 4, what it is? 6. 6 is divisible by 5. No, we will move further. Now, we will check for 6. So, after 6, what is there? 3. 3 is divisible by 5. No, we will come here on uh, 3. Sorry. Uh, now, we will come on 3. So, after 3, what it is? 8. 8 is divisible by 5. No, we will come here on 8. So, 8. After 8, what it is? 0. 0 is divisible by 5. Yes. Right? 0 is divisible by 5. So, it will be uh, this condition is true. Okay, now we will check for preceded digit. So, preceded digit is 3. 3 is divisible by 3. Yes. So, total count is 3. So, option number 8, that total 3 digits are there. Who are, uh, uh, whose are like preceded digit is 3, divisible by 3 and follow digit is divisible by 5. So, the question was quite tricky. And uh, there are 3 variants in this question. This is uh, saying that immediately followed by a digit divisible by 5 and immediately preceded by a digit divisible by 3, right? One variant is this. Another variant can be, it will be uh, saying that which is either followed by a digit divisible by 5 and, uh, sorry, or preceded by a digit 3. So, it, uh, here it can be either as well. So, in that case, the digits will be multiple, okay? So, accordingly, you have to solve. Let's come on to the question number second. If in a certain code language, this thing is coded as this thing, then how will you code as this? So, as we can see that this much and this much, right? It is same only. In every case, it is same only. So, just we need to check for these letters, right? So, I am writing here S-U-R-N-I-S-H. This is I, okay? Now, if it is written as G, W, U, R, N, Y, O. So, we will uh, update their position. So, F comes on 6th place, U on 21, R on 18, N on 14, I is on 9, S is on 19, H is on 8. 
D is on 7, W is on 23, U is on 21, R is on 18, N is on 14, Y is on 25, and O is on 15. Right? So let's make the pattern. So it is incremented by 1, it is incremented by 2, it is incremented by 3, it is incremented by 4, it is incremented by 5, it is incremented by 6, and it is incremented by 7. Right? Same pattern will follow here in mystery. Mystery. So, uh, 13, 25, 19, 20, 5, 18, and 25, right? So, then what we will do? Uh, we will increment by 1. So, it will be 14. That means it will become N, right? So, the answer will start from N. And on, so, option A, num, uh, option A will be eliminated because it is starting with M. Right, now then we need to add 2, so it will be 27 and in our alphabet only 26 letters are there. So at 27, we will mark A, right? 1 to 26, A to Z, Z to A. So it will be A at 27, so now A. So option number D will also be eliminated, now the option can be B or C, right? Now we need to add 3, so 19 plus 3 will be 20, 21, 22. So, 22. So, it will be V. So, N, A, V. Okay. Next, we have to check again. So, it will be incremented by 4. So, it will be 24. So, 4 at X. Then, it will be incremented by 5. So, 5 and 5 will be 10. And at 10, it is there J. Right. So, N, A, V, X, J. This wala, uh, code will be the right answer for this question. I hope it is clear. Okay. So, now let's move on to the next question. So the next question is from data sufficiency and it is again a very important topic for all your placement exam, not only for Accenture. So the question is saying the question given below is followed by two statements, number one and two. Determine if the statements are individually or together sufficient to answer the question. So in this, in this type of questions, only we need to tell that whether we will be able to find out the answer or not. Uh, with the help of these statements, right? There will be a question. There will be some statements. So with the help of these statements, either alone or either uh, combining them, if we are able to answer, then we will mark, like with the help of this, this, we are able to answer. Otherwise, we will mark, no, we will, uh, we are not able to answer the question, right? So the question is, what is the percentage of students who are not taller than 180 centimeter, all right? So first of all, let's, Take uh, statement one. The ratio of number of boys and girls is four ratio three. So V and girls, boys and girls, right? So boys are uh, four and the uh, girls are three. Okay, so this is the ratio. So by seeing this ratio only, we are not able to tell that how many students will be uh, taller than one eighty or uh, lesser than one eighty. So if I take only statement two, so it will be thirty percent of the boys. And 30% of the girls are taller than 180 centimeters. So if 30% and 30% means 60% of the total students are taller than 180 centimeters. So I can say that 40% students will be there who are not taller than 180 centimeter. And this is same the question is asking, right? So I can say that only statement 2 is enough to answer the question. So the answer will be only one of the statement alone is sufficient to answer the question, but other statement is not. Yes, first statement is not able to answer the question. The statement two only is able to answer the question. So option number D will be the correct answer for this question. I hope you got it. Right. So let's move on to the next question. Next, uh, this the question is from uh, seating arrangement. So we have to read the information. A farmer, an engineer, and a professor, and a mason, and a manager are the five persons. Okay. So let me make some uh, seat, seats for them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All of them are facing north. All right. So the farmer does not wish to sit immediately next to the manager or to the engineer. So I'm writing here, farmer will not sit immediately next to the manager or engineer right so farmer will not not sit here if manager is sitting here and engineer is sitting here or if engineer is sitting here and manager is sitting here so these combination are not going to be uh, applicable the second is 
the manager and the mason sit immediately next to each other so manager and mason will be sitting each other maybe mason is here and manager is here but the combination will be this like okay now the third is the professor is at the right end of the row so this is the right end of the row so professor is here only so we will fix the position of professor and the farmer is immediately to the left of professor so if professor is here to so the immediate left of this will be of farmer's place so it will be of farmer's place right now who is sitting between the farmer and the manager okay so we have already uh, two statements there that the farmer does not wish to sit immediately next to the manager or the engineer so i can say that manager or engineer will not be here right manager or engineer will not be here so they can be either here or either here right now the second statement is the manager and the mason sit immediately next to the each other so if i uh, if mason is sitting here because farmer cannot sit uh, immediately next to the manager or engineer so mason will be here only now what it is saying the manager and the mason sit immediately to the next so mason so it should be manager and it should be engineer right so engineer comes on first place all right so this is the uh, seating arrangement of this so now we can answer this question who is sitting between the farmer and the manager so this is farmer and this is manager so mason is sitting mason is sitting uh, in between the farmer and manager all right i hope it uh, it makes sense so let's move on to the next question who is sitting to the right of the manager so from uh, here only we need to find out the answer who is sitting to the right of the manager so right of the manager is right of the manager is uh, sorry uh, who is sitting second to the right of the manager sorry the question is who is sitting second to the right of manager so one two so farmer is sitting to the right of the manager second right so farmer will be the correct answer for this question right so let's move on to the uh, question number six just a minute okay read the information given below and answer the questions that follow four boxes x y z and w and three files m and o are kept on a table one after the another in a row from left to right okay so there are four boxes right and the boxes are x y z and w and there are three files m and o okay now they are uh, they are kept on a table one by one okay so there are total four people i can say or i can say elements so one two three four five six uh seven okay now file o has as many items to its left as to its right that means file o must be uh in the middle so the middle is here so i'm putting here m so three places are here and three places are here okay so we have done with this now no box is at either end of the row so here box cannot come uh no box is at either end of the row so boxes are x y z w so we cannot put x y z w on the end of the row okay now uh, i can say that if only three files are there m and o and o is already fixed so m would be here or n would be here right this is n or i can say n would be here or m would be here right this is the combination only left we have done with this as well now box x is kept to the immediate right of file m right box x is kept to the immediate right of file m so if i if i kept my file m here then only i can move on to the right direction right so uh, we will put x here right so the arrangement will be m then x then o then places are left here and then at last n okay and while, uh, while file o is kept to the immediate le left of box z so file o is kept immediate left of box z so box z will be here then only it will be immediate left right so two places are left and uh, it is not yet decided that who will come here either y or either w right okay now what is kept at the extreme left of the row on the table so it is the extreme left 
So M will be the answer, right? Extreme left on the table. So M will be the answer. Now the next is what is kept third from the left of the row on the table? So from the left to the third. So one, two, three at this place. So it is not yet decided from these statements that here should be B or W. So both. B, uh, sorry, Y or W, this is not B. Y or W will be the answer because we don't know who will come here uh, because our statements are not sufficient to have the idea about their position. So Y or W will be the answer. Okay, now study the following arrangement carefully and answer the questions given below. Okay, so this is the series. What should come in place of the question mark in the following series based on the above arrangement? So we have to refer this arrangement. Just a minute. We have to refer this arrangement for finding this. Okay. So uh, it is starting from here only. So 6, 6, hash, hash. Then we have left 1. Right? 1, we skipped 1. Then at the rate and exclamation mark, it is there only. Now we have skipped two elements now it is starting from pa right so pa is here now we have skipped uh, three elements one two three then it is at the uh, sorry and and one okay now it is a kind of series one skip two skip three skip now it should be four skip right so after one it should be four skip so seven z H and dollar should be skipped and J and asterisk should be come next. So D will be the answer of this question. The logic was pretty simple that in the first go we skipped one letter, then two letter, then three letter, and in the next we will skip four letters. Right. So let's move on to the next question now. The next question is from syllogisms, and this is really very important for any placement exam. So based on these, see for solving syllogism, we need to consider these statements at the universal truth right we cannot say that if it is saying like uh sita is a boy so you have to consider that sita is a boy right if it is in the statement that sita is a boy so you have to consider sita is a boy now here are statements and based on these statements we need to tell how many conclusions are following these statements right so let's make the diagram uh, this type of questions we will solve using Venn diagrams. So it is saying some pencils are not pen. So we will make uh, uh, this later. But first let me start with second. All pens are erasers. So it will be easy for us. All pens are erasers. So I am making as suppose these are my pens. And all pens are eraser. So it will come under eraser. Right. I can make it like this. Now no eraser is a sharpener. So I will mark that no eraser cannot be the sharpener. I am only writing sharp. Now first statement let's take. Some pencils are not pens. Right. Some pencils are not pens. So I can mark uh, pencils like here I can make the diagram like this. So these pencils are pens but apart from this. This while apart are not pens. So our uh, statement is following like our Venn diagram is following the statement it is okay so these are the pencils okay these are the pencils now let's come on to the conclusion so conclusion is saying no pencil is a sharpener so see it can be or it can be not because according to this Venn diagram it is there uh, I can say it is there proved that yes pencils are not sharpener but what if I can make the pencil wala diagram here so my statement is following only that some pencils are not pen and here i'm saying that no pencil is my pen because we need to uh, cons we need to consider that some pencils are not pen so it is following that that some pencils are not pens yes it is true but our diagram has been changed and according to the this conclusion no pencil is a sharpener so here pencils are sharp not so it is not going to be true right there are multiple possibilities so if you are not a hundred percent sure about any idea or about any fact so you will mark as no right so there is a possibility but not surety right so you will mark, mark no now all pens are not sharpener so don't consider this now so all pens are not sharpener so see if eraser cannot be sharpener, so how can pen be a sharpener? Let's take a simple example. Suppose I live in UP and UP comes under 
India. And I'm saying that India is not Pakistan. Right? So how can I say that UP is Pakistan? Because UP is a part of India only. So UP cannot be also Pakistan. So this is same thing happening here that pens cannot be the sharpener. So only conclusion two is following. So answer will be only conclusion two follows. So option number A will be the correct answer over here. I hope it is clear. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So in a certain language, if this, see, see this is only same in all of these, right? So you have to worry about this code only. U, R, V, A, N, I, S. T I C is coded as V T E E O K V X J and E as this. So how we will code as this V E R I N O S I S. Right. So let's give them the number 21, 18, 2, 1, 14, 9, 19, 20. 9 and 3 and v comes on 22 and 25 5 15 22 x 24 z, uh, 10 and e5 okay so let's try to find out the pattern the pattern is 21 plus 1 21 plus 1 is 22 then plus 2 then plus 3 then plus 4 then plus 1 again plus 2 again plus 3 again, plus 4 again, plus 1 again, plus 2 again. So it is uh, it is the pattern that 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2 and so. Right. So again we need to uh, do same thing here. So it will be 22, 5, 18 and it will be 9, 14, 15, 19, 9 and 19. So we will add 1. So it will be 23. That means it would be W. So, W uh, will be the first letter. So, it cannot be our answer. Now, plus 2. So, 5 plus 2 will be 7. And at 7, it comes G. So, G. So, now the answer can be either C or A. Now, plus 3. 18 plus 3 will be 21. At 21, we have U. So, U. W, G, U. So, yes, we have find out our answer there. W, G, U and so and so will be the correct answer over here. Right? Now, the next question is from verbal ability. Mark the option which is close to the opposite in the meaning of the word given below. Bona fide. What does bona fide means? Bona fide means it is fact or it is real or it is certified. So, we have to find out the opposite of this. Perfect. Uh, no, it will not make any sense. Fake. See, if something is real or something is certified and the opposite uh, and the opposite of it will be fake because it is not real it is fake option number b will be the correct the opposite in the meaning of the uh, given word instigate instigate so instigate means that someone or i can say to misguide someone right instigate to mislead someone i am writing mislead mislead someone and we have to find out the opposite means to guide someone or to guide someone in a uh, right direction or to cause someone to so cause someone right cause will be the correct answer for this question now the next question is which part of the sentence given below has an error in it they insulted me throughout that evening as if i am their worst enemy okay so uh, pause the video and try to guess the answer now, let me tell you, the answer will be throughout that evening, right? They insulted me. That evening will be okay. Throughout that evening doesn't make any sense as if I am. So, throughout that evening. See, here we are referring a specific time only. That evening, in that evening, they insulted me. So, why do why we need throughout, right? Throughout is not needed here. Option number B will be the correct answer for this question. All right. So, let's see the next question. Again, suitable option. So, my head X. So, I on coffee the past few days. So, see. Uh, this is kind of present perfect continuous tense. Because something is happening continuously from past few days. So, we will be using uh, has have been. Right? So, we will be using has or have according to the subject. But, been will be there. Right, so my head X, so I, so up, uh, with I we will use have, we, 
cut it down. So I have been cutting down coffee because my head aches, right? So I have been cutting down coffee the past few days. Uh, uh, question number seven from verbal ability. Fill in the blanks with most suitable option. So we need to fill them with the suitable article. All right. So neem tree is important source of me uh, medicinal extracts. So here we are specifying a tree. And whenever we are specifying something, so we will use the, so it will be the neem tree is now I, right? So it will be N. An important source of, because uh, before vowel we use I, but it is not mandatory every time that before vowel, uh, sorry, before vowel we use N as the vowel, but it is not mandatory to use N vowel only uh, if it is starting from Sorry, what I'm saying, an article only if it is starting from Google, right? See, here uh, we can uh, check from the Hindi Varnamala, right? So, if, suppose, let me give some example. If it is union, right? And if it is umbrella. So, it doesn't mean that both will be an and an, right? It is wrong and it is right. Why? Because... It will be, uh, it will be taking the reference from our, I can say, um, Hindi Varnamala. We will pronounce it as union. So it is U, right? And it is the consonant in Hindi, right? In Hindi Varnamala, it is the consonant. Now it is pronounced as umbrella. So it will be A. So it is the vowel in our Hindi Varnamala as well. So we will be use N. And we will uh, we will use a here at uh, before union, right? Are you getting my point? So you need to check for the uh, sound. What type of sound it is producing? Whether it is producing a vowel sound actually, or it is producing a consonant sound. So according to that, we will use a and or the, especially a and n, right? So uh, now let me move forward. This is the option number, question number eight. Fill in the blanks with suitable option. I am of the same routine every day. Okay, so I am exhausted of the same routine every day, tired of. Okay, so exhausted or tired, both are correct, but the most appropriate will be exhausted. Why? Because this is something which is happening again and again. And if it is happening again and again, that means, uh, that means it is exhausting, right? Tiredness uh, can be of, I can say, temporary thing, but exhaustness is kind of permanent because you are repeating the same schedule day by day over and over again. So it will be exhausted. You will be exhausted with the same routine every day. So exhausted will be the most appropriate answer, right? So the next question is, fill in the blanks with most suitable option. I, my thesis, why next December? Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, we will use, I have completed my thesis by next December. Uh, just a minute. Why next December? Okay, so. We are talking about next December. That is something going to be in future. So uh, we will say I will have completed my thesis by next December. I will next December tak apni thesis complete kar lunga. So it will be the correct answer. We will not use have completed because we are saying here that next December. So we are talking about the future, right? So it will be the correct answer that will have completed will be the uh, next, uh, sorry, correct answer. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Fill in the blanks with more suitable option. If any, uh, if he uh, space any more, he liver damage. Okay. So if he will drink any more, if he will drink any more, he will drink any more, he suffer. No, 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 no. Okay. If he, agar wo aur zada pita hai, uska liver damage ho jayega. So, if he drinks anymore, right? So, his liver, his liver will suffer. See, here we will, uh, we will first say the present tense, the present tense, then we will talk about the future tense. If you will, 
if you are doing this thing now then it will affect in your future right same thing if he if he drinks any more so his liver will be damaged so he drinks and will suffer will be the correct answer option number c will be the right answer okay so let's come here onto the pseudo code so here we have three integers a b c all are uh, having uh, value as four so there is a if condition so in if what we have four and this is bitwise and v is or v this is not power operator this is or operator right so v is four or four and four again right so let's solve this first four and four as this is bitwise so we need to convert them into binary but here we don't need because there is a short trick to solve uh zor operation so if you have to find out a or a so it will be always zero that means if both of the values are same and you have to find out the zor so the answer will be zero only right so it will be zero four and zero and four right and the truth table of and says that if any of the operand is zero so the whole will be zero the resultant will be zero so here it is zero so the whole resultant will be zero this condition will be false we will directly come here print a plus b plus c that means 4 plus 4 plus 4 that means 12 will be the answer option number d will be the correct answer for this question let's move on to the next question a value is 10 b value is 11 so let's solve this so a will pass here as 10 we will pass as here 11 if zero so if it is zero th that means the condition is false so we will directly come here and we will in uh, we will add a by four times so add 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 it will be 40 we will return a that means 40 will be returned by this function so 40 will be the correct answer for this question the question was quite simple okay so if a is 5 and b is 1 so let's solve if b plus a so v is 1 plus a is 5 or a minus b so a is 1 v is uh, a is 5 v is 1 and v greater than a so v is 1 is greater than 5 and 1 okay so let's first solve parenthesis so it will be 6 or 4 now this is the just a minute where is my cursor this is the logical end now let's solve this one is greater than five so it will return a zero and one right solve them six or four both are non-zero values so it will return true value only so i can say the return value will be one or i can say true and it will return zero zero and one will be zero only right so one and zero will be ultimately zero so the whole condition of of if is zero we will come here right we will come here uh, in the else part and we need to return a minus b plus one right so a minus b so a is five minus one plus one so it will be five so five will be the correct answer option number b right okay if you didn't understand this that how it is going like this is logical and so the operators will work like suppose this is operand a this is operand b and we need to find out the a and b right so if a is 1 b is 0 so the answer will be 0 if a is 0 b is 1 so again the answer will be 0 if a is 0 b is 0 again the answer will be 0 if both are 1 then only that case the answer will be 1 so i can say that if any of the operand is 0 so the answer will be 0 only in and case okay so this is the next question and this is the last question for today so a is 4 b is 8 so 4 will be passed here just a minute 4 will be passed here and b as 8 uh oh b as 8 will pass here now if a is greater than b that is 4 is greater than 8 no so we will come here we'll check for the condition if 8 is greater than 4 yes this condition is true so we will come here a value will be updated to a or b so a is 4 uh, or 8 so let's convert them into binary because this is a bitwise operator so four binary code will be with the help of 8 4 2 1 we can make how we can make four so we will write one here and rest are zero and how we can write eight so eight zero 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 right and we can fill this with zero as well zero as well 
right now we need to take zor so zor operation works if both of the operands are 0 0 so in that case it will answer 0 if both of the operands are 1 and 1 so in that case as well it will answer as 1 that means it will be answering one value only when the both operands are different. So, 0, 0, same. So, it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, different. So, it will give 1, 0, 1, different. So, it will give 1. So, it is 8 plus 4 is 12. So, A value is now 12. From here, we will return A plus V. That means 12 plus V value was 8. So, 20 and 20 will be the answer of this question. Right. So, let's solve the next question as well. Then, we will wrap up the Okay, so we have integer x and x contains 2. Now, we will have to check for the condition if x equals to 1. So, if x equals to 1, so x is 2 only. So, the condition will be false. So, we will out of this if part, right? Because this is not true. So, we will directly jump at the last else statement. So, it will be C. So, C will be printed only. Option number B will be the answer. So, yeah, that's all for today. We will meet in the next class. Till then, bye-bye and take care.